Hey guys, so we'll learn here back in with another edition of Throwback Thursdays. I believe we are on number 22. Pretty sure I got the number right last week too with Archer. If not, well then, that's what happens when you take a break from doing something for a week or so. So there you go. But today, we're going to be taking a look at the Hasbro slash Kenner Small Soldiers in Shaniac with Mimic who is a character that really wasn't in the movie. I don't remember him in the movie, but he's a little bonus figure you get, so that's cool. He's PVC, doesn't move or anything, but he's nice to have. He's a little weird, kind of shaman-looking dude because he's doing the whole rain dance pose. But there you go. There's Mimic. He's a little green dude with red hair then we have insaniac who is freaking awesome uh, aesthetically i love this guy it's like todd mcfarlane and ed roth monsters had a baby and it was this guy so that's cool uh, those of you who don't know i am very partial to the art of todd mcfarlane and those of you who don't know me know that uh will know that uh, yeah i'm a big fan of the ed roth like hot rod monsters and stuff too and this guy gives me those vibes as well. But on top of coming with Mimic, he also comes with a couple little chains here, which wrap around his wrists, like so. You can take this one. This hand actually needs to stand, but for now we will wrap this little ditty on it. And now he's got some little spike chain weapon things going on. It's kind of cool. And what you do, and this is very reminiscent of the um, Twister Strike Scarecrow from the Legends of the Dark Knight series, which came out around the same time as this. You pop his waist out, and he can spin around. Granted, the chains just kind of fall off, but... You can spin around, smack people in the face. You're going to want to make sure that he is uh, facing forward before you click that back into place. Before you, uh, yeah. So it can actually click back into place. But as far as this chain goes, you can uh, totally do the Jacob Marley on him and have him chained up. Which is usually, I think that's what I do on my shelf. I have the chain kind of like resting behind his legs. But, uh, yeah, Insaniac, a little bit more articulated than Archer, a little bit. His arms move in and out. But other than that, he just has the rotation in the head. He's got, uh, forward and back in the shoulder, nothing in the wrists or anything. Then he's got the, uh, swivel in the leg there. And you can definitely see, like, the knee. The elbow, the feet, all kind of meant to be articulated. But they are not. They're just sculpted that way. Uh, up here, you can actually get away with that pin because I believe that's part of the character design. But uh, really cool looking figure, man. Look at that face. Very McFarlane-esque. <laughs> yeah, this guy was kind of like the comedy relief in the movie it's hunched over he's purple he's got this crazy spider shaped hair he's got one eye that's bigger than the other the big toothy grin this bone necklace there is a variant of this guy which i intend to get at some point it's the uh, witch doctor insaniac and his mouth is actually open with a tongue hanging out like uh, venom so that's kind of cool but uh, really, to get this guy to stand, you need to have this hand on the ground. But uh, he can kind of do the superhero pose. the One foot forward, one foot back, hand on the ground, arm out to the side, head tilt. It's all thunderstruck, for those of you who remember Iron Man 2. But I learned a little bit more about this movie after watching the Nostalgia Critics video on it. And it turns out... Joe Dante of Gremlins fame 
also directed this movie. So that makes perfect sense. I believe it was Joe Dante. It was Dante regardless. But uh, same director as Gremlins. Uh, Kirsten Dunst from Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy fame. Mary Jane Watson uh, was also in this movie. Quite young too. I think she was a teenager at the time. And then the father from the Michael Bay live action Transformers movies from like 2007 to 2011 was also the dad of the main character Alan in this movie. So that's pretty cool. You know, if you like the live-action Transformers. If not, well, then I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> and also, this is a DreamWorks movie. Which uh, DreamWorks formed pretty soon before this came out. It wasn't too much longer that this movie came out after DreamWorks was formed. Which DreamWorks is basically like all the people who gave a crap about their jobs at Disney left Disney and formed DreamWorks. A lot of the people who worked on Gargoyles actually went on to do DreamWorks and uh, that that's probably why Prince of Egypt such a darn good movie. Um, <laughs> This movie was alright. It wasn't perfect. I get that, but I, I like it. I like the figures mostly. I like the cool looking monsters, but you can definitely tell that this guy's got a lot of unique sculpt on him. Got the little spike bracelet there, his little loincloth. He's got a, another little thing around his leg here. I also have a Burger King toy of this guy somewhere. Less detailed, of course, and his hair looks more uh, silly. Just kind of looks like little beans on his head instead of the kind of spider look that this toy has. But I don't know where that is either, that insaniac uh, Burger King figure which speaking of which they want like 30 bucks for that uh, Ocula Burger King toy which is the Ocula to get according to my buddy Brian Sarner shout out to uh, old Strutel man but yeah this is a cool figure man I'm kind of just rambling at this point because there's not a whole lot to talk about with these uh, and I like to talk so <laughs> you know I think he's awesome. He's probably my favorite from the line. Even though he's kind of a pain in the butt to stand. I typically just do this. Even though it's off center and whatnot. But he does stand that way. But at any rate. I'll just use this hand to prop him up for now. And uh, we will take a look-see. At some size comparisons. First up here is Insaniac, next to the only other Gorgonite, and actually the only other Small Soldiers figure I've taken a look at on the channel thus far. We have Archer, took a look at him last week for a throwback those days, and as you can see, Insaniac is absolutely massive next to this guy, and I'm not sure if that's entirely film accurate. I feel like the 10-inch Archer is a better scale, much better fit for this Insaniac figure. Let me know in the comments if that's... Uh, true or not he looked a lot bigger in the movie uh, archer not in Saniac. but uh here is mimic he wasn't in the movie again but there he is anyways as you can see he's uh of course smaller than both of them but again i feel like that 10 inch archer might actually be uh more to scale with this insaniac figure than this more basic archer figure but nonetheless this is the archer I have space for, and because he's so small, I doubled up on him, and I have the battle damage one somewhere around here, which I might actually be doing a throwback Thursday on at some point. You never know. And last, but certainly not least, we have our two regulars, the Mythic Legion's Brother Mandibulus, the 11 Spawn, who as usual towers over everyone, but in this case, I think it's Saniac. If he wasn't pre-posed with his legs bent like that, would be giving Spawn quite the run for his money. But with that being said, time to wrap things up. Some final thoughts. Overall, and while once again I know that this is not the most perfect interpretation of this character from Small Soldiers, I'm going to say that Insaniac here is definitely, most likely, my favorite 
figure from this line with 110% confidence. I'm pretty, I'm pretty keen on that decision because, well, his design, it's just so McFarlane-esque. It's like McFarlane meets Ed Roth type stuff. And you guys know me. I love me some monsters. And Tom McFarlane and Ed Roth monsters mixed together, that's a match made in, I guess, hell, isn't it? Not so much heaven. But at any rate, yeah, this is definitely one of the most sought-after characters from this series, so I would highly recommend if you want this guy to pick him up sooner rather than later. I mean, they're getting almost 30 bucks for the Burger King Ocula, which is the Ocula to have, but it was like a $1.25 Burger King toy back when it came out. Is it really worth that much? I guess it all depends on what you're willing to spend. And if you're willing to spend that much, you're insane. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this week's edition of Throwback Thursdays. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And if you are so inclined, please hit that notification bell so you know whenever I upload more reviews like this one. Next week, we're going to be taking a look at old Troglacon himself, Frankenstein. Because we've got to show that algorithm who is boss, right? And if you haven't already, hit me up on Instagram at Overlord Productions. But as always, keep the comments civil. So the world sucks enough as it is. And until next time, I'll catch you guys later.